What's up, guys? Ashes of Outland comes out tomorrow, and uh, my god, I am so excited. There are now 10 classes, so yeah, I made about 20 decks, but I'm just going to cover five that I thought were pretty promising and uh, the most exciting and uh, the ones I want to play first, personally. Um, now, the first day of the expansion, I don't know if you guys have ever played in one before, but uh, you see a lot of random stuff. It doesn't really matter if your deck is that good. You can just play whatever and you're going to have a good time. So if you're missing any of these cards, just sub them out for whatever. Don't don't craft anything and, um, you know, just, just, just play whatever you get. There is duplicate protection now, so you should have a larger collection. Um, and, and you should be able to have a good time. Uh, day one of any expansion is the most fun in the Hearthstone cycle for me personally. So yeah, just just play play random stuff. So yeah, I'm going to go over these five decks. And uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is Quest Lerox OTK Combo Hunter. Uh, this is really, really exciting um, using Beastmaster Lerox as a combo with the King Crush on top of the Quest Hunter package. I always love Quest Hunter. It was one of my favorite archetypes. And um, I'm going to throw Shuma in here. He's probably cuttable, but uh, one of my favorite cards in the game. So you're probably wondering how the combo works. And uh, that is through King Crush and Lerox. So King Crush has eight damage and uh, you have Ramakin Wild Tamer. So you're gonna use the Ramakin Wild Tamer on your King Crush. That's gonna make another King Crush. You're gonna use it again and make another King Crush. So you have three King Crushes in total and then you Beast Master them for eight mana, pulling all three Crushes, which do eight mana or eight damage each. And then you use the Hero Power, uh, which is gonna make them all do 10 damage each. That's 30 damage, and you can hit him in the face. Now, if you end up pulling them through the Scavenger's Ingenuity before you duplicate it, then uh, you're going to be able to do what is a 39 damage in one turn. So that's pretty cool. Other than that, the deck just has great removal tools through like a Swarm of Locusts, Unleash the Hounds. We got Desert Spear. We got Diving Griffin. Um, we got Bone Wraith for a little bit of protection. And um, yeah, Varanus for, for dropping the high health targets and then just slapping them with our rush minions that do one damage then we have some great draw in here through the questing the the scavengers the tracking and if you're you're scared about ramekin hitting a random beast just make sure the king crush is the only beast in your hand when you play ramekin so this is what i'm most excited about i'm probably going to play this one first um but let's move on to the next list which is spell token druid now token druid is a familiar archetype but spell token druid not so much so we're not running many minions here we just have our arch spore machiffin and then we also have kill thos sun strider um machiffin probably cuttable but i just wanted to play with him because uh, he's he's a cool card you don't have him I'm just put an innervate or something instead kill thos really great because we have some cheap spells through like uh iron bark which is actually zero if you have at least seven mana crystals and same thing for bog beam so the idea here is to have a large hand for your glow fly swarm because for each spell you get a 2-2 two -two. so you want to make uh you know a big board pull your glow flies then you want to hit that with the soul of the forest and not a lot of people can deal with the soul of the forested token board godfrey's gone and other classes would need two aoe's in order to clear it zephyrus doesn't deal with it very well and it's just uh it's a very it's it's, it's kind of scary the thought of of seeing a board full of death rattle minions right now so we got full spells we got fungal fortunes which will draw spells uh three three cards drawing three for two uh, it'll discard any minions so you might discard your machiffin which is fine you really don't need them you might discard your sun starter which is fine you don't need it like it's great to have sun starter but you don't need it like you just want to control the board um, and then hit it with the Glowfly Swarm and a Soul of the Forest, maybe on turn nine. And then your opponent can't deal with it. You hit him with a couple Roars, hit him with a couple Blessing of the Ancients and uh, Power of the Wilds, and then you hit him in the face and, and you kill them. If they can deal with that board, you could just constantly Forest Aid. You know, you got Forest Aids, four of them here, because they, they, they're they twin spells. And then uh, on top of that, you could just do some Force of Natures and stuff like that. But yeah, overall, the whole list is good. I do think Spell Token Druid is going to be a viable archetype. Uh, this, of course, probably not going to be the list. But for day one, you should do just fine. The next list I want to look at is a Secret Stealth Aggro Rogue. Now, I do think Rogue is probably going to be the best class in the game. Just because a Galakrond Rogue, it's not really losing any tools. So probably Galakrond Rogue or Highlander Galakrond Rogue is going to be like the number one deck for Rogue anyways. And um, 
I, I just wanted to mess with the tools that we were given here, which uh, it's it's we got secrets and we got stealth. So they're going in a really cool direction with rogue here. Um, so I wanted to really capitalize on that and make an aggro rogue. So we have really strong minions like the spy mistress, which is a three one with stealth and infiltrator, which just has one less attack. And those curve beautifully into the ash tongue slayer, which will give it immunity and three attack. That's a lot of pressure. And then we're going to have a bunch of of other stealth minions through like Sky Vatir and Akama and Greyheart Sage, also an insane amount of draw that synergizes with all of this. And we also have the secret package through the Bamboozles, which are really, really frustrating to play against, at least when I was playing in uh, in the Summit. We got Dirty Tricks, which draws some, but I think is the weakest secret we have. And then we do have Ambush, which will summon, you know, some poison minions. So it's kind of frustrating to play against. Um, we do have Blackjack Stunner, which I think is one of the stars of this deck because it's a targeted freeze trap and sap in a way uh, which it's just it's so good and it's it's one mana like this is this is huge so i threw in some shadow steps so we can really make it annoying that our opponent could just never stick anything on the board it actually kind of worries me how frustrating it sounds to be on the opposing side of this just playing minion after minion and just getting blackjacked over and over and over um, and then, uh, yeah, we also got other great targets for the Shadow Step, like the Miscreant, the Greyheart Sage, if you need to draw more. Uh, you, got, you got Flick, you got Maev, and um, maybe even Shadow Jeweler Hanar if you want to ensure, uh, you know, growing another Christmas tree the next turn or whatever. So really like the Stealth Aggro Rogue. Uh, looks pretty cool. Um, we got a Demon Zoo here, and this looks really cool because I've always enjoyed Zoo as an archetype. And it just wasn't doing great recently, but I think this is gonna do just fine. It look it looks stronger than than in uh, days past and the previous expansions. I don't know if it'll be able to compete with other aggro decks because everything just looks so good right now. But uh, this has some really promising looking cards like Hand of Gul'dan, and then we have targeted discard for it, so we're gonna be able to draw so much because the Nightshade Matron as well as the Expired Merchant. Those are both gonna discard the Hand of Gul'dan and then you're going to uh, be drawing a bunch of cards. So you're constantly going to have gas in your hand, and you're going to be able to throw minions out over and over. So you hopefully overwhelm your opponent and just destroy them. So we have a lot of self-damaging minions here that we're going to be killing ourselves. That's fine. Through tapping, through the Soulbound Ash Tongue, through the Flame Imp, through... Um, well, I guess, I guess that's mostly it. But we have Dark Glare here to capitalize on that. We're going to refresh Mana Crystals every time we take damage. So maybe you stuck an ash tongue on the board, and then you play uh, you play the the dark glare. You slap, you get two mana crystals. You tap, you get two mana crystals, and then you can just vomit everything on the board. It just it sounds disgusting in theory. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, and then we got Guardian Ar Og Merchant, which is just a really, really strong card because getting Divine Shield on one of your dudes, maybe getting a value trade, or just making it really annoying to deal with for your opponent, they just can't seem to remove it, uh, seems really, really strong. So like this list a lot. I'm thinking maybe we, we might even want to lower the curve because I feel like Hand of Gul'dan is going to draw so much. Plus with the the... Expired merchant adding more copies of it to our hand, hand once it dies, it's gonna be um it's gonna be pretty crazy, right? So we got Highlander Demon Hunter here. I think this is a very promising demon hunter list. There are a lot of really cool demon hunter lists. And if you want to play something that feels totally different, like you've never played it before, something completely fresh, just play Demon Hunter in general. Like token, uh, there's gonna be a big build of it, and um of course, this Highlander build as well. I do think uh, Firebat was playing a Highlander Demon Hunter, and it seemed really, really promising. Um, and I just wanted to use as many different like Demon Hunter cards as I could. So this looks really, really fun to me, and I'm I, I'm excited to try it. Even though we don't have a class, you know, Highlander card, you have enough value through uh, DQA and uh, Zephyrus here to really just be able to make this build happen. And something cool about Highlander is it's just, you're playing so many different cards every time. It, it just never gets old, in my opinion. Um, and Demon Hunter does seem to have a ton of strong cards. Like, I could just go through every card and name it off. And they all seem so good. I even, I feel like I wanted to put in more Demon Hunter cards in here. And I just, I didn't know what to cut because everything seems so strong. So, uh, you're probably just going to want to, I don't know, play this a bit and see what feels weak and swap it out for something else, obviously. Um, but, um... Yeah, if you're missing any 
of these cards, any of these legendaries, just slot them out for another Demon Hunter uh, card, and you're going to do just fine. Okay, I said I was only going to talk about five, but I want to talk about this other one, because I'm really excited about it. I just think it's a meme, but it's going to be really, really enjoyable. Um, we, it's a Dark Shadow Council Feoris Warlock, and the idea here... Um, it's very similar to like Prismatic Lens where you would pull out uh, King Feoris and play it at a discount. But here you're pretty much, you're guaranteed to get Feoris and play it on five. You're going to have a large hand. You're going to use Dark Portal on four, which will pull your King Feoris because that's the only minion in your deck. He's going to be five mana. You play him on five and your opponent may not be able to deal with him at that point. If they do deal with him, you might be a little bit scared, but you're, you're probably, you're still... You still got a chance, right? Because we're going to have a large hand and we're going to hit it with the Shadow Council, which is going to replace random demons in your hand. Or it's going to replace your hand with random demons. Give them plus two, plus two, right? So uh, it's going to be a clown fiesta, but it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, the plus two, plus two should make it so most of the demons seem pretty strong. And we do have two Shadow Councils in here, so maybe uh, you don't hit the other Shadow Council with your first Shadow Council. And um, you'll be able to do this multiple times. We do have Imp Balming, so we could shuffle more um, imps into our deck. And maybe we just hit them with the Shadow Council later. So you might be thinking, oh, what happens if you draw Feoris before you, you Dark Portal and pull him out and then you, he's 10 mana? Well, you, you can shuffle him back into your deck, hopefully, with the Plot Twist. So at some point, when you Plot Twist, you're hoping that you have your Dark Portal, but not your Feoris. So you'll play the Dark Portal pull the Feoris, play him at a discount, and then, um, yeah, seems like it should be a lot of fun. Pretty excited about this. Should be good on day one. I don't know. This might be like a tier four deck or even worse, but I do I love my meme decks. So um, that's that's about it. I'm really excited for the expansion. Again, don't craft anything here. The meta is going to be so shaky and unstable, as it always is. But, um, yeah, it should be a lot more free-to-play since the the duplicate protection which does not protect like the rarities the chance of getting a legendary is still the same it's just you're not going to get a duplicate legendary the chance of getting a epic is still the same you're just not going to get duplicate a lot of people seem confused about that but uh, yeah a lot more free to play and uh, you know what else is more free is hitting the like button if you want to do that and subscribe i will be covering a lot of the new decks in the days to come i am so excited for this expansion and this rotation um, you guys, you're, you're amazing. Uh, good luck on ladder and stay hydrated.